Hayden Proctor and coming. And I was asking, like, man, how many scholarships we got? What do we have to do? And what does this mean? And what are the rules and all this kind of stuff? I want to give you the, the information that he gave me. And then this, this is my lead into to the conversation about it. So uh, 84 scholarships were taken uh, with a Proctor ad. So 80, 83 right now. So we actually had a couple um, available. If Proctor comes back, it would be 84. Okay. His projections were the, and what me and JT talked about on the phone too. Who's going to transfer out after the spring game and whatnot. He's kind of said, well, you might lose another defensive tackle. I did not know that we had 11 defensive tackles on scholarship. That seems like an abundant amount of yeah, that, that sounds, that sounds like uh, the time that uh, the Bears had like 16 tight ends on the roster. Yes, yeah, so we do have 11 scholarship defensive tackles inside guys. He sent me the list of the names of those guys. Um, so um, you got a lot of backers too, and you only had very few cornerbacks. So he's kind of anticipating that we're probably going to have to free up some spots or use some extra stuff with the um, potential transfer outs after spring to try to get some of the corners. So he's basically saying with the other rumor, does Caleb Downs come now or later or whatever, we actually have a scholarship position available for him if he actually wanted to um, to come back. So uh, four quarterbacks, five running backs, I don't even go into wide receivers. I didn't know we had six tight ends on scholarship. That also seems like too many. But the defensive tackles, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven defensive tackles inside backers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven inside linebackers on scholarship. And this is the part. Cornerbacks, five. That's I think enough. about just think about the young ones they got. I know. So there there's gonna have to be a need. There or someone that could play that. The safeties, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven safeties, right? So that's kind of a quick deal. Okay, so all this starts breaking. You know, I know Ryan's hearing a lot, being on the ground and all this kind of stuff. I'm just kind of curious to – first, I want to talk about the the move, Ryan. I want to say, are, are people really excited about this? What What have you kind of heard? Just from the pulse of it, is it kind of like how I was feeling? Where I was kind of like, uh, I'll give my full take on that a little bit. He's kind of like, uh, was everybody kind of like, man, how did this really happen? Or is it just like, man, we great. He's coming back. Let's do it. What do you think, Ryan? All right, I'm going to take Coach Stallings. I'm going to use a Coach Stallings uh, verbiage. Okay? Hey, brother. Okay, okay. Here, here we go. Here we go. If the NCAA is for it, I'm against it. I mean, if he said that one time on my show, he said it a thousand. <laughs> he would always say, if they're for it, I'm against it. So I'm going to stand with Coach Stallings uh, arm in arm right here. If they're for it, I'm against it. I, want, I don't want to blame Caden Proctor because I remember when I was a young man, uh, I didn't have my mind made up. And I think these these individuals, I know we, we put D1 athletes at a, at a high level and we expect a lot from them. But let me say this. They're getting pulled in a lot of different directions. Okay, mm-hmm. We've got tampering going on. If you look back at Caden Proctor going to Iowa, um, I think they've already had to self-report some of that tampering. They did. uh, Some of that violations. So you have to understand, if somebody had walked up to me at 18 years old and said, listen, I'm going to fill your checking account with this, um, you got to come back home. Okay. Then then especially (laughs) at that transition period, because you, you think about where he was at, Coach Saban had just retired. The world was melting down. Alabama was falling apart. Uh, I've heard it all. I mean, it, it's, you know, it's falling apart. And I'm like, guys, it, it's, it's not that bad. So what I heard is, is very simple. And, and, and I, I don't want to add too much to it, but it's it simply Caden Proctor came into the Alabama system. Alabama is a 33rd franchise for a reason. I mean, you walk into that building and it's, it, it's, it's a pro system. They operate like a pro system. You come here, the nutrition staff, I mean, I think they spent $5.8 million feeding 
athletes last year. I mean, I mean, let, let that kind of I mean the food, the quality. The <laughs> don't, hey, don't get me and Suge talking about them old hard ass oh, steaks hey, we used to no. eat back in the uh, hey, Brian that Hall, whatever. I mean, <laughs> yeah. the green carpet, y'all remember that nasty green carpet yeah. um, in the corner of the Malmore football complex? I mean, it's so you walk in now and, and, it's just, you know, it's like the Taj Mahal. I mean, it's it's just simply amazing. So think about him coming out of Alabama and going to the cornfields of, of Iowa. And he's like, hold on a minute. I thought that everybody was like Alabama. You know, we're, 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 hold on a minute. We're, where's the, you know, we're, where's the lobster? Where's the steak? I think it was simple. I think he went back and he said, whoa. And I know he's built some great connections uh, on this team. I know he came back for spring break. He went to the uh, – fishing with some of his former teammates and uh i think they they pretty much embraced him and said hey you know we, we we'd love to have you back and i think he realized you know what <laughs> this is a pathway to get back and i think he began to explore and to say you know mm. what i can do this i can do this so i blame the system i don't blame the player um and, and a lot of times i don't take the side of every single player discussion uh sometimes i try to be as fair as i can but in this situation we have to look at ourselves as people in the college football business the bureaucrats who um who pushed this can down the road and allowed the supreme court to overrule the system is broken and really this may identify do i like it no listen if if um you know let's say uh Parker, uh, the center that transferred from Washington or Austin Mack, or, you know, maybe uh, uh, the tight end from Washington would have come here and he'd stay here for, you know, three or four months and transfer back to UW. I'd probably have the same reaction. But really, we got to look at the system. This should magnify what's wrong with the system when things like this are completely, because there's no eligibility issues. I mean, I couldn't ask Kaylin to bore about it because he's not officially back on the roster, right? Because, right. Uh, but but as far as the eligibility side of things, there is no debate. I mean, he will be eligible from day one when he you know arrives back on on campus. Now, to me, I've got to attack the system. The system is in place. This is not a Caden, you know, Proctor issue. This is an NCAA issue where they're going to have to take the bull by the horns and really fix what's happened to college athletics. I don't know who's going to be to stand up and do it. And I love Nick Saban. I, I have no faith in him accomplishing uh, this at the Washington DC level. I, I'm sorry. I love coach Saban. Th yeah. This is bigger than coach Saban. You're not going to put this genie back in the bottle and it's neglect that we allowed to get here. We, we did this because we failed to adjust to the current college football structure. And so here we are, we're asking Congress to get involved we're, we're asking all these and, and coach Saban, I love you. You might as well go enjoy the beach down in South Florida. Cause he, I don't think he's, there's nothing. I don't think he can do. I, I really, no. I, so I'm. It's a got to um, fix this. You know, and that's what I was kind of talking no about. Power, the uh, no, but yeah, I'm just hoping. The question I asked him yesterday is like, what, what okay, are they, they here do. for anymore? Or like, what what do they do now? They they they're not allowed to. They can't enforce any kind of nil rules. They can't enforce transfer rules. They don't own the playoff. They have nothing to do with the postseason. They don't have anything to do with the regular season. Uh, so like, what? Something got to happen. So well, let me think about this, guys. They came out right. two weeks ago and told us that they weren't going to. <laughs> JT, at least, you, you, at you least lie, it. right? <laughs> <laughs> well, they, no. You're just I gonna mean, say, "Hey, look, multi multi transfers, is... cool. We we we're, we're going. We're just not gonna investigate is... anybody. We're not investigating anybody imagine? for any nil violations. Not even retroactively. Okay. Y'all do what y'all want to do." That's like me going through Gordo or right. Pickens County on the way to Mississippi, and they say, "Well, we're, we're gonna take all the radar guns out of the police officers." You think <laughs> police I'm gonna do this? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I mean, yeah. the, the idiots, I mean, right. literally, could you imagine what this portal is going to be coming up here in a couple of weeks when we open this thing up? They told you, know, you they're not going to investigate it. Let so me say this. Let done. me say this. And then I want to get, um, I want to ask you something here. And I know I said I was going to ask you guys this, but I, I need to say that, you know, I've been getting a lot of 
talk because I've been saying the same talking points from the sense as you found it, that I think this is a broken system and not the kids. Some people just talking about the greed of the players and all this kind of stuff. I'm like, no, man, they're in a system that that's what it is. The rules are the rules. If you don't want it to happen, change it. Don't blame it on the, yeah, the don't player. Hate the player. Oh, hate, I hate the, the player. I mean, that's the rules. If I can go get a hundred thousand, then go back and get another two hundred thousand, and then and not have another to pay it back. <laughs> and I'm something I got to. Hey, man, shoot, that's just what it is. I, I mean, no, I don't. Do we like it? No, but it's legal, okay. And so I wanted to flip onto the other side of this, the player side, Shook. So I'm asking you, and I didn't prep you on this. This is true, just from your heart. So, so now you're. Just got recruited. You got to put, don't put your hat on from a long time ago because they're going to say you're old head and you, you're a hater or whatever, right? But you're, you're, you're yeah. a, yeah. a freshman. You're a freshman that just came. I consider to, myself progressive. I can, I can. All right. So you like just came. Yeah. You were, you were recruited yeah. <laughs> and you were just coming in, um, thinking you're going to have this spot to play, right? On campus because Proctor left. Right now, whatever you've been elevated, coaches loving on you doing this stuff. If Proctor actually makes it back, we're going to go ahead and say he came back. How are you feeling as a player now? What does this do to the locker room? What is it happening to you that, like, man, this guy left? Everybody's loving on him, all the fans. The coaches, maybe they gave him extra money. I don't know what really happened, but how does it make you feel as a a player now that may have to be in competition with him? And so uh, we're kind of having to deal with this on the high school level. You know, like they've said for for many years, how the it's a trick and effect. The what happens in the pros, then it happens down in college, and then it comes to it comes to high school. But as a player, the reality is, George. I'm, you know why? Because I never stopped looking for the next payday anyway, because like you just said, you guys just discussed, the rules are the rules. So even though I, people are loving on me, I'm still listening to and talking to the next opportunity or the next pay uh, situation. And if he comes back, then I will uh, very uh, kindly move to the next one, and I won't lose eligibility. I'll go get a pay raise, and and uh, and again, um, what it has done has has completely eroded any sense of loyalty. You know, again, I'm I'm always for the players. I we you alluded to the difference in what our meal situation was uh, 30 years ago and what it is now. And it should change. It should grow. Uh, but as that, as that, uh, uh, now I'm that recruit or that, you know, second year guy that had just been elevated to a start and, and things been going good and me and my teammates or whatever. But the the difference is now is in that locker room. Uh, while uh, get, guys will get on the camera and and speak to uh, uh, how you know how they care and, 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 and it's about the team and this, that, other. Unfortunately, guys, um, as soon as the, the, the spotlights go off, the camera walk, man walks away, they're, they're texting on their phone to see how much money the next person's going to give them or the next place is going to give them. So to answer your question, I'm not mad at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just know that I'm going to have to uh, go to my, uh, my, my number two if, if I'm not – and, and, and I, I want to mention this because it's important, and, and we all need to uh, acknowledge this. What kind of competitor am I? Am I a guy that says I don't give a rip if, if that dude's coming back or not? Uh, he's going to have to show me that he's going to uh, beat me out or, or take my job. Uh, but uh, if I'm not that, if I'm not a dog like we were talking about a few minutes ago, I'm just going to wherever they're going to pay me. Because uh, somebody else wants me, somebody else lost a guy to injury in the spring. Like they've only had four practices. Everybody else has only had three or four practices. Some uh, there's any hand, uh, any uh, number, a handful of kids that have have lost their season already in spring practice due to injury or some something or another. Okay, 
All right. Um, and I appreciate that. And, and what you're saying is that basically man up or, or make your own business decision and go. So JT, you know, what, what are your initial thoughts about this from a, from a player's perspective? You know, Hey, this is going on. Are, are you, are you taking the same kind of approach? Like it just, it is what it is. Um, I don't know because I know how analytical you are too, right? That you're probably thinking about this. Or how calculated would you be when you have to make a decision if you're a player there, um, or is it just destroy the locker room? I mean, there's so many different ways. How do you think? Because now it could happen to a lot of people. How much of this is on onus on the coach to even allow them to come back? Do we care? Does anybody care about whether people leave and then try to come back to the school? So, a lot in that. You take it wherever you need to take it. Um, I think there there's a lot of different angles I could see this from, um, and I, and I feel like like if I'm in the if I'm an incoming freshman, um, I don't know that this changes much. I think the the kind of the the route that I'm at is like that's what they recruit for anyway. Like if it's not Caden Proctor, it could have been somebody else. You know, like they could. If I'm an incoming freshman, they are like I'm probably not the only offensive tackle coming in anyway, and they already got another. And then just because Caden Proctor left doesn't mean that I was going to be given the spot. There's probably another tackle that they were going to try to start over me anyway. He's gone for two months and he comes back and is like. Okay, so there's eight weeks that I thought I was higher up on the depth chart, but this is year one. I probably, you know, unless I really just think that, like, I'm that dude, that I would. But I also feel like if I felt like if I was that dude, then it, it doesn't matter because I was going to take a spot anyway. Um, so if I'm an incoming freshman, I'm kind of like, look, this is a wash. It doesn't matter. I still got to put my head down and work. Um, wow. Now, maybe if I'm. Caden Proctor's backup and I'm a junior and he leaves and then he comes back and he's like, Oh, psych, never mind. You know, Jordan meme, I'm back. <laughs> um, that I think is where the conflict then hits me. Cause it's like, okay, maybe I was thinking about transferring anyway. Cause this kid was a freshman and I'm going to be a senior next year. He's going to be a sophomore. It's just probably not going to happen for me anyway. Um, I, I do think it makes it harder, but what I struggle with when I'm thinking about this is like, how much does it really change? Cause it wasn't, he was gone for like literally eight weeks, 10 weeks, maybe. And you haven't even practiced yet. So he like missed some of off season and you know, you could, you could rationalize this to say like he had long COVID and he wasn't allowed to be in the building and then he came back. Um, it's not, it's not that he left. I played a full season and he came back and now they're just going to give him the job. That I think is problematic. That I think is where, where you have, you have locker room issues. Um, but really at the end of the day, it's like, what, what actually changed? Cause you haven't really been in practice yet. So. I, I don't I don't know. Um I don't know if if you were if you already thought you were gonna stay, I don't know that this changes anything. If you already thought you were getting ready to leave, I don't know that this this actually changes anything. Yeah. So let me let me um give everybody my quick thought and then I wanna get back to Ryan here in just a second. So um I'm on both I, I got two sides of this. One, I, I'm not mad with Proctor coming back or whatnot. I, I do feel like um, I, I'm mad with the system, what Ryan was talking about earlier. I'm mad with the rules. I don't like them. I think they're stupid. There's not enough safeguards. Um, yeah, like the, the, I agree with you. This should not – this shouldn't be allowed. Even it though it is be benefiting Alabama, it, this shouldn't be allowed. Yeah, so I, I'm I'm mad at that part. You know, I'm ha okay. I'm happy as a fan, man. He's back. Woo! We get a guy back. There's going to be all everything, um, in it. But I'm just mad at the system because this could be anybody. It is stupid, um, and so I don't like that. This is probably where I may catch you guys. I, this is where I'm. I'm a little upset, and I guess I would like to know what 
the board's mindset is. So I'm the new head coach and I'm coming in. Whatever reason, right? But you as a player decided, I'm not even going to give you a chance. Right? He's young. He's 19, 18 or whatever. I don't know what the conversation, maybe he had one-on-one conversation. Maybe he did. Maybe he didn't. Whatever it was, you made up your mind that I'm getting ready to, to go. Right? So you leave. Now, me as a head coach, somehow I get wind that you want to come back from a player. You've been hanging out. You're doing so. Hey, we might be able to get him back. Now, the coach has to make this decision on whether or not he's going to accept this kid back. I'm asking you about players, but now I'm trying to figure out what do I feel as a coach that just came in. I'm trying to build something. And how many guys do we lose? 26, 28. I don't know how many transfers bolt it real fast. How many of them do I actually want to get back after they left, you know? Um, and who do you, how do you put value on this? How are you talking to the donors or the um, burn and NIL collectors or whatever could happen and say, man, we really need to get this guy back and it's going to be good. I can handle the locker room. I can manage this because the coach has to be a part of it too to make sure that the players don't get out of line because they're bitter, like you just said, because that junior – you got to go have this conversation with this guy like, uh, because <laughs> you know he's walking into mm-hmm. your office going, hey, he, he got a pay raise, you know, or something. So free agency is killing it, right? So, um, Ryan, I, I guess, you know, what do you think about, you know, from the standpoint of the coach, how do you feel the – you know, am I way off base with that, or is it just? Well, and I can add to it a little bit, um, just a little bit. I and, and we talked today with um, J.C. Latham, and he said, you know, he said the green sometimes the, the pasture, the green grass is, doesn't always taste the best. Okay, but I will say this: I watched teammates last night, uh, and really one of the guys that he'll be competing with for one of those spots was, was a welcome. Now you can say everything on social networks, right? I mean, you could say I'm happy and welcome you back and all those right. things. So I, I get that. I'm, I'm understanding that, but it, it's, and I think when you come to Alabama, you better not be afraid of competition because you, right. you're going to get, you're going to get waxed out pretty quick. I mean, so, you know, and, and I always use that all the time. And, and also I want to say, Stephen McDaniel put up something on y'all's chat box. I don't want to take y'all's job here, but uh, he, he reminds us of something. Elijah Pritchett, the guy that he's battling for at that left tackle spot, was also in that portal too. So there was a lot of chaos, you know, here in Tuscaloosa. And, um, you know, it, it's – and there's going to be a lot more – I'm not saying entries, but – you'd be crazy not to think that we're, you know, we're going to lose some guys. Um, that's probably in, who knows, it may be in that quarterback room. Uh, because if, if Jalen has really taken some steps uh, in this spring that we hear behind the scenes, um, some of these younger guys are going to go, you know, can I wait more, one more year? You know, because you look at the K-1 board system and you say, can he get Jalen one year and get him out of here? Right. Because in reality, I guess he would have two years of eligibility if he wanted it. So in your mind, you're going, okay, And so you got to process that. So I just think it's I think these these young men have adjusted and and I think they'll they'll be fine. And I'll just add one more thing to Caden Proctor here that that may be uh, some some good information from you guys is I think. um, Caden's lost a little bit of weight. And I think that's going to help him. And yeah. if anything, that's made a lot of fire under him because, you know, sometimes we get things taken away from us and it's a wake up call. It's like, hold on, you know, maybe I need to push back, play that lobster and uh, prime rib and, and, and lose a few. Cause I mean, he played overweight last year. Uh, but I, I was, I was told he was down between 20 and 30 pounds and I, you know, that's going to, that's going to help him. He's it's gonna be out. good in this system. He's Go a ahead, baby. Uh, he's a baby. Yeah. He was a baby. That that has nothing. I'm telling you, what what he found out was the uh, the the United States and Mexico, the exchange rate is quite different. We fix part of the money. The money you get paid in hours. <laughs> the money you get. Yeah. So, it's all right, quite JT. different. I just and I just said, wanted to. I'm uh, going back to the United States. That's what he said. But right, the, the reality is. 
they're different nowadays, guys. That's the hardest part. You know, yeah. JT and I know uh, high school. I'm an old school guy. That's why I haven't been coaching the last two years, uh, dealing with the different attitude and mindsets of players, the guys that are willing to leave and the guys that are staying but don't really care and ain't mad that the guys are trying to leave. They're going to welcome them back in with open arms. They're going to sing Kumbaya. Now, they're going to still uh, uh, fuss and cuss in the locker room or whatever, but they're going to be happy-go-lucky that he's there. He's going to help us win. We're gonna be on the. We're gonna be champions, and uh, so I'm gonna get a little go bit get more paid. nil money mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. instead of you know holding guys accountable. That I mean, again, it, it, that way, but they're they're friends. That that it, it and and he's gonna help the program. And but, you're talking about the the weight rhyme again. That difference between the freshman year and the sophomore year, especially as you uh, grow up. And he, he's had some turmoil now. Again, he, he he's had some uh, uh, turmoil. I'm telling you, I'm going to say this and I'll shut up. I guarantee you when he went back to Iowa, the amount of work, the the distance he wanted to show those guys, the separation in in, in Alabama and Iowa uh, contributed to him being different. He want, I guarantee you he spent time demonstrating to those guys how different it really is at Alabama and the difference in Iowa and Alabama. Yeah, hey, wait, 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 wait. You know why he lost the weight? Because he was in Tuscaloosa. He was all up in Dreamland, full moon, <laughs> archer balls, all this kind of I stuff. He go, up, he, go up, <laughs> no. he go up to Iowa. I don't know. I think they eating wheat and corn. Or I don't know what they eat. <laughs> they ain't got no substance in there. So they lost 20, 30 pounds. Mm-hmm. But, but hey, anyway. You, hey, let let me let know. Let you don't know anything about country, George. How do you think <laughs> hogs get so big? <laughs> they eat corn. That's how they get so that they feed the corn. Oh, okay. But, Hold but on, but hey, okay. was, Go ahead. No, but hey, think about this. It, it just came to me. Okay, if you're Kayla the Boar, if you got anybody that wants to talk about the transfer portal, let, let's just say you got a guy that comes in on March the 14th, the day after A Day. I want <laughs> you to meet Caden Proctor. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him about all. Uh, tell them about those places away from Alabama. Uh, Kate, you now your punishment is going to be you're in these meetings. Now tell these guys how great we have it here in Tuscaloosa. I mean, that's true. I mean, he would be the poster, right? Mm-hmm. He's like, whoa. That's so true. he might even he might even convince a, a few young men to say, uh, you know what? That's a wake up call. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Thomas Jefferson said, "Smart people learn from other people's mistakes." Uh, yeah. JT. Yeah, so I was going to say just kind of um, something that, that dawned on me when um, Suge was talking about uh, it kind of some, something similar happening in high school. And I was thinking, I was like, that that, ha- that literally happened to us this year. Um, now, he didn't actually leave and enroll. Um, and I won't say what his name is, but he um, was trying to go to a, another uh, school because – he thought that uh, they were going to be more competitive. And he was a very good player for us. He was a starter. Um, it was going to be, uh, he, he was an upperclassman. So, you know, we, we didn't know where he was for most of the summer and didn't really participate in spring. And then late, late in the summer, I think he showed up for like the state seven on seven tournament or something. And uh, was like, I'm back. And, you know, the, Coaches are kind of like, all right. <laughs> so then you go through camp, and that's when you start having your, your, you're trying to figure out who your captains are going to be, right? And there's many ways that different coaching staffs do it. Some coaching staffs just say, these are who our captains are, and we're going to dictate who it is. Um, Coach Sheely likes it to be very much player led with the option of us vetoing if we have to. You know, if the kid's a knucklehead or whatever. Um, and they voted him a captain, n- knowing that he was going to leave and say, hey, look, I don't think we're a very good football team, so I'm going to try to go to this other school. And he came back. They voted him a captain. There was at least two people on the staff that was like, look, I, look, I don't really – this don't sit right with me. But he was like, look, that's what the players want. We're in – 
he ended up being a very it it it's weird to me that like you get through once you got through camp like i kind of forgot that even happened until like just right now so I know there are scenarios where like it can go off the rails and like the locker you can lose locker room and all that kind of stuff. But in our case, that didn't happen. And, you know, we didn't necessarily have a punishment for him or anything like that. It just, the players welcomed him back. They voted him a captain and we were kind of like, well, I guess, this, I guess this is what it is. 